of the Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Then he says, be merciful. Be merciful to those who doubt. Verse 22. Now, around us are all kinds of people. And uh, some of them, you know, maybe they walk close to God once upon a time. But now they're not walking so close to God. That's where Jude's word comes in. Be merciful to those that are doubting. Uh, if, we, if we took a poll of everybody here, we'd all have to admit, or most of us would have to admit, or most, yeah, that we doubted at some point. We needed mercy. Someone maybe showed you mercy, and now you are to show others mercy. Be merciful to those who doubt. There may be those that question. Just because a person would question something in the Bible doesn't mean they're following false teaching. Be merciful to them. They're having a struggle. So that kind of thing you can help. Be merciful to those who doubt. Then he says, snatch others from the fire and save them. So there are those that are dangerously close to the edge spiritually. And it's your job, it's my job, to snatch them. Do everything we can to get them to follow Jesus Christ and to walk with God. Snatch them from the fire. Do what we're able to do. Now, we're limited. We can't force them. But we can do what we're able to do to snatch them from the fire. And so he said, save, you know, in doing that, to save them. Finally, to others show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. You know, when you show love to somebody that's living in sin, it doesn't mean you're agreeing with their sinful life. You're showing love to them. You're trying to help them to the truth. Now, here's the thing, but it's mixed with fear because you know the end result. If they continue in that life of unbelief and sinful life, you know what's going to happen. They're going to be lost forever. So it's mixed with fear. See, show mercy mixed with fear. We are not able to convince everybody only God can do that. That's His work. We have to be careful. We're not doing the Holy Spirit's work. Right? We're letting the Holy Spirit work in us and work through us to try to help them. That's the thing. Okay? Now, this is what we're supposed to do. So, repeat after me. Build up. Build up. Pray in. Pray in. Keep yourselves. Keep yourself. Wait for. Wait for. Have mercy. Have mercy. Save, others. Save others. And hate even. Hate even. <laughs> All these things are true. How we're supposed to respond to the current crisis that's going on around us. We're, you know, the world's on fire. It's burning down. What are we going to do about it? That's our place in this world. That's our place. Until Jesus comes back. Now, that's the emphasis on us. Now we're going to look at the emphasis on God. This is a great comfort and we've got to keep a balance in our teaching. So it's not only all about me or all about you. Our emphasis is about God. And in verse 24, in the wonderful doxology, in the closing, it's like a song being sung, in the closing of the book of Jude, he says to Him who is able to keep you from falling. To Him who is able to to keep you from falling and to present you before His glorious presence without fault and with great joy. Look at that. We are kept not just by anyone. I'm not just kept by my grandmother believing. I'm not kept by just my great-grandmother believing or my mother believing. I am kept by the One who is able to keep me. You hear me? He's able. He's able to do what no man can do. That's the God we believe in. And we rest our hope 
firmly, securely, and completely upon the truth that there is a God and His Son is Jesus Christ. Amen. Completely upon that truth. He's able. You may think your life is impossible. Some situation you're in, but you need to remind yourself and maybe the devil too, God is able. God is able. Second, He's able to make you stand. In this case, it says to present you before His presence. One translation reads to make you stand in His presence. To present you before His presence. He is able to make you stand. You know, I'm always greatly encouraged when I read the story of Stephen. It's a great sermon in Acts chapter 7. But it's a terrible ending from man's perspective. Man's perspective, they took the stones and they killed Stephen. But from God's perspective, Jesus is standing to welcome Stephen into heaven to his reward. From God's perspective, he makes him stand. Hallelujah. Jesus made it possible. Jesus stood for him so Stephen could stand in heaven. Hallelujah. We're kept by the one that can make you stand. Your life may be weak and miserable down here, but yet the Lord can make you stand in His presence by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's wonderful news. If that doesn't encourage you, you can't be encouraged. <laughs> that is wonderful news. We are kept, in verse 25, by the only God, our Savior. The only God. We are kept by the only God. You know, there's many, there appears to be many gods in this world that people worship and follow, but yet we have the one true God whose Son is Jesus Christ. Amen. That is the God we bow our heads to and we worship. We call on His name and believe He is the one true God. We're kept by the only God and we're kept through Jesus Christ. The Bible says our Savior be glory majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord. We are kept through Jesus. And we're kept by the one who deserves glory forever. Before all ages. Now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Finally we close. We're kept by the one who calls. Back to verse 1. Back to verse 1. To those who have been called who are loved by God the Father and kept by Jesus Christ. It's a great promise to you today. If you know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, then you are one who has been called. You are loved by God and you're kept by Jesus Christ. It's a great, great promise for you today. Jude focused on apostasy. When people were turning away from God's truth and embracing false teaching. This letter was written to all believers everywhere. From the first century on, the church has been threatened by heresy and false teaching. So we today must always be on our guard. Can you think of false teachings that we must be aware of today? Of course you can. How are we to combat these heresies? One, we live godly in Christ Jesus. We search the Scriptures. Know what they say. Hunger to know God and His Word. Make that your life, your commitment. Make that the way you will live. What do you see as the proper way to deal with false teaching and false teachers? Expose them. If you recognize false teaching, expose it. Don't be afraid. Say, that's wrong. Don't be afraid. Say it's against God's Word. Okay? Be ready. You might have a fight on your hands. Right? But it could be a fun fight. We're going to fight it for Jesus' sake. Right? We're going to fight it for His sake. That's okay. Some, th some things are worth fighting for. God's truth is worth standing up for. How do we respond in the face of these days of apostasy? A falling away. Uh, the scriptures are clear. There will be a great falling away as we get close to the end times when Jesus is going to appear. So we're going through a great falling away from the truth 
you be a student of the Bible. The advantage we have is you all have the Bible. Take the time to read it. Okay? Take time to read it. Know what it says. Find out what God's truth says. Search the Scriptures. If you haven't been doing that, shame on you. Okay? Shame on you. Right? Start today. Start today. Don't worry about what you haven't done. Don't dwell on what you haven't been. Don't dwell on the days that have passed. Today. Start today. Be a, a miner of gold. Find the precious gold that's in this book. This treasure trove of God's truth. Don't worry about what the past has brought. Search the Scriptures daily that these things are so. God will listen. God will respond as you search His truth yourself. Make a commitment. Say, I'm going to be one that searches the Word of God. You don't have to be like me. You don't have to be like the person next to you. Be what God has created you to be. You search the Scriptures yourself. You find out what they say, what they mean. What is God saying to you through them? You discover it. New for yourself. That's the thing about the Bible. I try, I try to read through it continually and I always discover something new. Always discover something new. Why? Why is it that way? Because this is a living book. <laughs> it has the Word of God that speaks to us. It is the living, breathing truth of God. Don't let anybody tell you it just has a little word in there. Or don't let anybody tell you if it speaks to you, then that's the word, but it doesn't speak to me, so it must not be the word. That's heresy. It's the word of God, whether you accept it and I accept it or not. It's still the word of the living God. And God has given it to us through ages of struggle among God's people. The blood of the martyrs and the blood of the saints Men, men and women, boys and girls have lived and died for the truth of this book and to preserve its message. Do not desecrate their memory by ignoring the truth. Let God speak to you. Let God minister to you by His Holy Spirit. Let God give you His truth, His promises that are alive and active and can get to your very heart you wonder why something feels wrong. Maybe it's because you need to draw near to God. You wonder why the things seem out of place. Maybe it's because the Lord Jesus is not ruling and reigning over your life. You wonder why uh, you, you just can't seem to make things work. That's, maybe it's because you've been doing it on your own. You've been trying to live on your own without God. And the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Today can be a new day in your life. A brand new day. A day that you can cry out to God yourself. A day that you can know God is listening. A day that you can turn from your sin and turn to the Lord. This day can be that day for you. Let's take a minute and pray together. Okay? Yeah.